Lamentations chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Surely he has turned his hand against me time and time again throughout the day. He has aged my flesh and my skin and broken my bones. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and woe. He has set me in dark places like the dead of long ago. He has hedged me in so that I cannot get out. He has made my chain heavy. Even when I cry and shout, he shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with hewn stone. He has made my paths crooked. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. God created us in His image. Very important for us to remember. And part of that means that our emotions are reflections of His higher and perfect emotions. It also means we can understand the depths of our emotions by understanding God. Really? Absolutely. You see, without God, our emotions can be erratic and even controlling. They can control us. We can easily become slaves to them. The book of Lamentations is written by the prophet Jeremiah as he deeply grieves for the people and the city of Jerusalem when it falls. Jeremiah speaks of the obvious that God had told his people, Jerusalem, to obey his commands and live. This would mean that their lives would be better and they would be a witness to the world that God loves and desires to save. Well, you know, the church is in that same position right now, this second, today. It's not here to serve us, to serve us, but rather we are here to serve God by serving the church. Unfortunately, the idea of serving ourselves has become a real deal today. Look at the commercials on television. Look at the commercials on the internet. But we're still confronted with this fact. God has emotions and they are never unjustified. God's emotions are perfect. And God tells us that he has emotions. He tells us what they are. God does not make mistakes. God is not somebody who makes mistakes. Even when we talk about God's anger. God does not make mistakes and take your Bible guide and turn to today's passage because this is interesting. As we study Lamentations chapter 3, 1 to 9, we learn about God. We learn some fascinating things. We need to pay attention to what the Lord is telling us. And Father, I pray today as we learn that you would help us to know the difference between our emotions and your emotions. Help us to Take the Holy Spirit into our lives. Help us to act correctly. We need to hear you. We need to be a part of what you're doing. Help us not to just react and react, but help us to act and react like you did. In the name of Jesus Christ, and we all said together, amen. Now take your Bible guide and turn to today's passage. If you don't have one, use the address at the bottom of the screen. And may I say that we appreciate your donations. They're really good to help us continue on with electric and with uh, cameras and everything else going on here. We're trying to make sure that we get all of these guides to you uh, this year, especially and next year we're doing it again. So I would just encourage you if possible, pray about it. I won't tell you what to do because God can do that, but uh, just pray about it and ask God what he would have you do. The anger of God, Lamentations three, this is amazing. And this is not a happy time in scripture, but watch this, we learn so much here. I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his, capital H, wrath. God's wrath. He's the man who's seen it. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not light. Surely he, capital H, has turned his hand against me time and time again throughout the day. What does that mean? Beloved, there are times when we feel, we feel our emotions feel as if God is against us. He's turned against us. But there are things we cannot see. 
We must trust in God's mercies. I remember when I was going through a difficult time and uh, I, I really had a, a challenging experience with somebody and, and uh, I said to the Lord, you know, you're not helping me. What's wrong? What have I done wrong? And I went through all that, but I did not understand that there was something else going on. I didn't understand that until two years later. And you know, God corrected me and God said, son, I see everything. And I have to, you have to trust me. And I learned about trusting in God, trusting, you know, trust in Jesus Christ, trust in God. And I learned that trusting in God was something that was very deep and happened on a regular basis. And we need to learn how to trust in God, trust in his mercies. He had already said to the city, he said, you know, you're going down if you don't change. They didn't change. And so they went down. That's what he's talking about. Lamentations continues. Chapter three, verse four. He has aged my flesh and my skin and broken my bones. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and woe. He has set me in dark places like the dead of long ago. Think about that for a minute. Listen, we cannot separate our flesh from our soul. We can't do that. Our unconfessed sin causes us grief in the end. Unconfessed sin. That's why Jesus Christ always tells us, confess your sin. Romans 10 tells us that. Confess your sin. John tells us, confess your faults one to another and pray for each other that you might be healed. God wants us to confess our sin. Very important as we think that through. Let's carry on because we'll need to remember this. Lamentations 3, 7, watch this. He has hedged me in so that I cannot get out. He has made, me, made my chain heavy. Even when I cry and shout, he shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with hewn stone. He has made my paths crooked. What am I saying? What's God saying? Listen, God hems us in while he judges the sin around us. To follow Jesus Christ is the most important thing we can ever do in our lives, ever. We need to remember this because if we don't, we'll get sidetracked and everything else will happen. In the explanation at the end of this teaching program right here, I need to explain that if if we feel hemmed in and we feel like God is coming in on us and we haven't done anything wrong, we've confessed our sin on a regular basis. And if we feel like God is not being fair to me, it may seem that way because of your and my perspective. But we don't see like God sees. See, God sees everything. God understands everything. God is not up there trying to get even with you. God is not up there trying to pound you down and make you suffer. That's not what God's doing. But God works with every individual around us. He works through us. And we need to, I say it again, we need to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the motions that he has that are holy. His anger is perfect. His jealousy is perfect. It's not like our jealousy. God makes things and is perfect. We need to remember he is a divine mind. He does nothing wrong. And some people will say, Rod, that's pretty hard for you to believe. No, it's not. I mean, I've lived with God for over 40 years of my life. And can you believe this? Can you believe that I have found many problems in our relationship over those 40 years and plus? And can can I tell you something? Every problem was mine. God revealed it to me slowly. And he showed me the truth about how he has brought me into certain places. And as I go in life, he brings me to other places just like you, just like you. So we need to keep in mind that that God is teaching us, not only about him, but he's teaching us that there are other things taking place. And Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus Christ that you would help people to learn and help people to understand that you are good and that we trust in you. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, of course. Cleanse us from unrighteousness, but help us, Lord, in our situation that we're in. Help us, Father, in Jesus' name to be the people who wait on you and trust in you because you are good. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, we trust you, Lord. And we all said together, amen.